Good morning, it's Friday, October the 17th, 1997, and we from Prop Wash Video are here at El Dorado Dry Lake for our 16th year. The gentleman next to me is, uh, I'm sure most of you know him, is Warren Cross, president of the QSAA. And Warren, what's cooking today? Well, Warren, it looks like we're going to have another great turnout. The weather's just been absolutely beautiful. We have lots of nice planes and some of the best scale planes I've ever seen. And uh, it just looks like the, the scale stuff is moving more and more into our event every year, and I'm really happy about that. Okay, last year we celebrated the 20th, so this is the 21st. Yes, this is our 21st anniversary, and um, I'm really happy, and it's really looking good. I think it's going to be one of our best. There you go. The weather's fantastic, so let's not waste any time here. Let's go to the flight line. Well, that wasn't quite right, was it? Before we go to the flight line, here are a couple of shots of the spectators in the vendor area. And now let's go to the flight line. And our first aircraft is a Piper Pawnee crop duster flown by Terry Schrader from Bakersfield, California. It weighs 40 pounds, has a 10 foot wingspan, and is powered by a Zox 5.8 turning a 22 by 14 prop. Here's the first dusting pass. Nice dispersion. Terry uses flour to simulate the dust. When the hopper is full, it holds 12 pounds of flour. Smooth landing, Terry. Garrett Morrison from Lodi, California built the Sukhoi from Wendell Bonner Plans and as you're about to see, he does a fantastic job of flying it. And here we go. This highly aerobatic bird weighs 25 pounds, spans 97 inches and is powered by a 3W70. Now this is big. It's a 12-foot J3 built from a Balsa USA kit by Thomas Reinbold from Carson City, Nevada. To achieve the bright yellow finish, Thomas used Dell Star Auto Paint. And of course, a big airplane needs a big engine, and this one's powered by a Quadra. Additionally featured are a fully detailed interior and a functional bungee landing gear. It's a week special. Yeah, it's 
Dr. Hawkins. And there's the tow plane. Troop carrying German glider. Tow plane. Tow line bearers. And the troop glider pilot. Everybody has to stay in line with each other so the tow line doesn't get tangled up. And where did you bring that glider from? Bangkok, Thailand. Long way. <laughs> Straight out from here. Taxing slowly while everybody's keeping the tow line untangled. Okay. Meanwhile, the pilot waits. Tow planes taxing out. Back off on the power a little. You're going too fast. They're telling him to slow down the tow plane a little bit. And all right. Boy, that thing's running a hole. Ready to go. Powering up the tow plane. Listen to that skid. And here he goes. Toad plane being flown by Malcolm Logan. Glider being flown by Dr. Hawkins from Thailand. It's up there. We have a release. Released. Okay, I'm clear. They're walking the pilot of the glider, Dr. Hawkins, into the box. Over to the box. A very popular model. This is a quarter scale Morrissey Bravo built from a SIG kit. The builder is Gary Larson from Ogden, Utah. By the way, the kit for this airplane was designed by master builder Claude McCullough. Going back to this particular Bravo, it weighs 19 pounds, has an 86 inch wingspan, and is powered by a Mustang 50 engine. Here's the landing. We've seen this week's solution here for several years now. It's flown by Paul Samaras and he really flies it well with its impressive smoke system. Let's watch. Johnson is one of those builders who can always be counted on to bring something spectacular. And this year's entry is no exception. This is a Republic P-47C that Noel Scratch built from his own plans. It's real big, weighing in at 50 pounds with a 103 inch wingspan. The power plant turning the 24 by 12 prop is a Bryson 5.8.
Johnson. This is one you've seen before too, but seldom flown. It's Willie Gardner's Australian air truck, and it's a showstopper. Willie built this 38-pound model using New Zealand Aero Products plans. It took four years to complete. The wings span 117 inches, and the engines is a Super Tiger 3250. By the way, enjoy this flight. It will probably not be flown again in the U.S. Our loss is Germany's gain. After the fly-in, the air truck went back home with George Vogelsang. And this is a man who needs no introduction, but we're going to introduce him to you anyway. This is well-known and respected TOC competitor, Dave Patrick. Dave will show you what aerobatics are all about. By the way, if you want to sharpen your aerobatic skills, Dave has produced three instructional videotapes called Ring It Out. He's also published a guide to aerobatics. Now let's listen to the announcer, Mr. Robert Dero. first lumps of act in 1963 when it first came out right here just miles from where we stand Dave flying here
Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Patrick, one of our top aerobatic pilots and instructors and publishers. We have full stall landing of the CAP 232. Come ahead. Thank you very much, Dave. I don't know the name of the pilot, but he's towing a very important message. See if you can read it as he does a flyby. Here's a slow mo flyby. And she said yes. Larry Jervitz from Poway, California built this quarter scale spacewalker. It's powered by a Zenoa 38. And as long as we're looking at Larry Jervis's planes, this well-finished T-6 is his also. It was built from a Zimpro kit, weighs 25 and a half pounds, and has a 100-inch wingspan. Larry finished it in acrylic urethane. Nice photo pass, Larry. Great paint job. This Kristen Eagle is fielded by Dave Lane from Wickenburg, Arizona. Dave is flying the Eagle in remembrance of Ray Hoffman, who passed away before he could finish the airplane. David Katagiri from San Diego Scratch built this very fast A-26 Invader. It weighs 22 pounds and has a wingspan of 105 inches. The control system is Futaba. Check out the underside of this Cetabria. That's a skydiver. This plane is being flown by George Normington, who is 75 years young. The RC Control Skydiver is being flown by George's grandson, Alex, who is 12 years old. And there's a skydiver. Alex is taking over with the control, and there's George and Alex. This is a Waco AVN8, and there's an interesting story behind the full-size version of this model. The full-size was purchased by TWA in 1938 to practice landing gear operation while their first DC-4 was being built. This gorgeous model was scratch-built by Mr. Claude McCullough and is being flown by Bruce Tharp. It weighs 33 pounds and the top wing spans 104 inches. The very quiet power plant is a Sato 300 twin. Incidentally, there is a great bio on Claude in the spring 1998 issue of the Quarter Scaler.
So if you're not a QSAA member, find somebody who is and read the article. Better yet, join the QSAA and you'll receive this fine magazine every quarter. This big GB is a prototype for a new fiber classic kit and is being flown by Mr. Fiber Classic himself, Andy Geetz from Germany. The engine is a Seidel radio. Said by the time you see this program, the kit of the GB will be available. That's Fiber Classics. Andy took the line chief's advice to go around, and here's the landing. Andy Geetz. I don't have much information on this half-scale pits, but I do know that it comes from Cactus Aviation and has a super smoke system as you're about to see. Here's the run-up. that smoke system? Soft touchdown. All right, let's leave the flight line for a couple of minutes and take a look at Vendor Row, which was almost a mile long this year. Lots of engines here. Desert Aircraft, Dave Johnson. Seidel engines, 3W engines. Ein großer Haufen. 
Fahnen und Fahnen. Das ist Defner so leicht, oder? Defner ist erstmal sauteuer. Das kostet ungefähr das Vierfache von. The Confederate Air Force was there. EMS Jomar Products. And here's my good buddy Boyd Newman. He sells those wonderful Zurich sunglasses. And if you have never tried them, you owe it to yourself to try a pair. Westcraft, big B-17s. They pinstriping and accessories. That's right. Look at this. Oh, and there's my favorite booth, and my favorite son working hard as always. That's Tony. Meanwhile, back on the flight line, this is a scratch-built Cessna 172 being flown by John Rausch. It's a 30-pound, 108-inch span airplane, and it's powered by a Super Tiger 90. Next up is this very nice rearwind speedster. It was built from an Icon and West kit by Jim Riccio from California. It's fairly light, weighing only 16 pounds and has a Quadra 42 engine. Believe it or not, that's monocoat on the finish. Here's the one you've been waiting for. From Germany, the pilot is George Vogelsang, and it's powered by twin turbines. Setting up the dolly and the bungee. And here's George. And are you ready to do this? Yeah, hope so. Hope so. We had a few minor problems, but uh, I guess we worked them out. What have we got? ME262 with no, what? Oh no, no, it's ME328C. 328C, yeah, I'm sorry. They only made about 12 of those and uh, they had them on pulse jets first and then later on they had them on turbines till early 45. But uh, they actually never tested the turbine in the air. As it was late 45, I think it was over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, did, was the original design to go with the, uh, with, with the wheels that uh, stayed on the ground also? S same with thing, same thing. Same thing, dolly. Dolly, and it even was rocket assisted on takeoff. Uh, what about the turbines? You've got two of them. Right, uh, two Dutch designed AMT turbines. Each turbine puts out about 22 pounds of static thrust and turns up to 110,000 revs. And how much weight are they pushing? Well, that's what I said, 22 pounds. On the, air, the airplane itself. Oh, the airplane itself. <laughs> Sorry, I got that one wrong. The airplane itself is about 46 pounds. 46 pounds. Right. And what kind of top speed can we expect today? Well, we did back home radar clock 440 kilometers. Kilometers an hour. Which is somewhere in the range of 230, 240 miles, I guess. So you're telling me my neck is going to be sore? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm still throttling back coming downhill. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get it, let it get too fast. As we always do have faced the problem of rudder flutter and this kind of stuff, so you never know. And you use counterbalance to get around some of the fluttering. That's the only way to go right now. You need heavy counterbalancing to cure that problem. Very good. There you have it from Germany, George Vogelsang. Right Thank up. you, George. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're setting it down on the dolly. Propane is used for just for starting until they can get it going on the uh, jet fuel. Thank you.
Here we go. Notice how the jet sagged a little after the bungee release. You'll see more of this in the Encore flight later. Now let's listen to those twin turbines. Is a skid a retractable yes, skid? Yes, of course. Oh, I okay, I didn't course, realize that. Yeah, sure did. Okay. So uh, we use about six atmosphere on the skid, and uh, uh, it really needs a little bit of cushioning, you know, when landing is. Yeah, yeah. Composite airframe. So it's it's not like uh, as though we're actually contacting the airframe. At, at, no, at, at, no, no, no. We had that on the Messerschmitt 163. We had a solid uh, skid on there, and that wasn't too good. But especially for Vegas. As this is not a grass field, obviously. Yeah. We put a little piece of titanium sheeting underneath to make it slip a little bit better. <laughs> well, it was an impressive flight. Thanks a lot, Wood. A Taube being flown by Ron Wynn from Temple City, California. 210, Jerry Kitchen. Jerry Kitchen from Riverton, Utah is flying this gorgeous Meister Corsair. It weighs 28 pounds, has a 93-inch wingspan, and is covered with monocoat. The engine is a Sox 4.2, turning a 22 by 12 prop. And Jerry likes to fly low. Jerry likes to fly inverted. And sometimes you'll see Jerry fly low and inverted. How low can you go, Jerry says. And here's a close-up so you can check the landing gear for Jerry. Gorgeous landing, Mr. Jerry Kitchen. And if your eyes are like mine, you won't be able to read the side of this airplane. But it says, move over. Given the cowhide paint scheme, I wonder if the full size is owned by Gateway Computer. 
Anyway, this T6 was built by David Smelly from a Byron kit and is powered by a G62. have a P61 Black Widow built by Dan Molinsky from Nick Zeroli Plans. Look at how smooth the surface is. That was accomplished by applying fiberglass over the balsa structure. The 61 weighs 45 pounds with a 114 inch wingspan. Now let's watch Dan put the Widow through its paces. Look out, Charlie Chambers. And here's a gear drop. Look into this gorgeous metal skin simulation. I don't know what he'd use, but it sure looks good. Aircraft taking off. Foreman from Germany brought this Fiber Classics P-51 Mustang. It's powered by a 3WR2, weighs 38 pounds and spans 100 inches. Carl says that it took six months to build. I couldn't find out the owner's name, but this monocoupe was brought from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I do know the name of the owner of this beauty. It's a C-119 flying box car, and it belongs to Nick Rivaldo from Long Beach, California. Here's its cargo. Almost at legal AMA limit, it weighs 53 pounds and has a 135-inch wingspan. Obviously, it's scratch-built. We 
Will you be dropping? Yeah, the orange color, you can see they used a lot. And like Alaska, when it's like up in the snow. Yeah, it's like in the snow. 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 It's like Right now, the pilot's checking out the drop site. Two jeeps. All right. Personnel to drive the jeeps. We thought you might like to see a slow motion replay. As Nick brings it in for landing, I forgot to tell you earlier, the engines are Quadra 52's, Nick Rivaldo. This is Dean Lassick's Warthog, and this is Dean. Dean comes from Littleton, Colorado, and built the A-10 from Josh Harrell plans. It's powered by two OS-91s turning Dynamax fans. As you're going to see very shortly, there's two things that Dean likes to do. Fly fast and fly low, preferably both at the same time. Was that low enough for you? And just in case you need to see it again, here it is in slow motion. He got that low. Is that a foot? Maybe a foot off the ground. The camera, the camera. approach but when Dean pulls back the power on this big bird it comes down fast Mr. Dean Lassick if you've seen our scale masters and top gun programs then you know about the Cessna Ag Wagon it was built by Randy Hansen using New Zealand aircraft plans A BD-1 
ND5J. This unusual ducted fan aircraft comes from a Byron kit, weighs a mere 15 pounds, and is powered by an OS-90 turning a Byro fan. It's being flown by Robert and Mark West. We all have a long walk ahead of us. The airplane is an AeroWorks Edge 540, and the pilot is Ryan Taylor, who incidentally is only 18 years old. Let's watch Ryan. I think you'll be amazed at what he can do. Ryan Taylor. Nice series of vertical rolls. Pushing over the top. Coming in inverted. Nice series of aileron rolls. Part of the Cuban angle. Nice series of probably see you at TOC in the not too distant future.
Here's a neat idea. An electric motor glider. Throw the switch and go. No noise, no muss, no fuss, and most important of all, no sticky fuel residue. Here's the crash cart and a few of the casualties from this weekend. Dale Yaney from Hemet, California, Scratch built this 12-foot RB35 flying wing. It weighs 32 pounds and is powered by four OS32s. It's hard to land because there's not much distance between the nose and the mains. An unusual British aircraft, this is a Westland P-12 tandem wing, scratch built by master builder Edward Hess from Molalla, Oregon. And you saw the crop duster earlier. And from Funks Graphics, Eddie, he never sells anything but he has a good time. That's right. On my way to the skill masters. <laughs> Custom electronics, lots of different servos and radio gear. Mike Bargeal from Home Headquarters Club. And Mike, you've got a new product. Tell us about it. Well, it's a product to hold your plane and for display and building and covering and painting. And it's just a handy little tool to own. Well, what is it? It's a stand, primarily, right? Take a picture of it. Well, right I here. okay. I was going to do that <laughs> later, but since you insist, there it is. A visual effect is better than verbal. It's all metal construction. All steel. Steel, excuse me. Yeah. Ruggedly built. MIG welded. And you can configure this in a lot of ways to do a lot of things with the airplane. If you want to know more information about one of these. Contact me at uh, area 702-871-0954. There you have it, Mike Bargeal. No, we didn't get a chance to talk. Okay, I'll talk to you. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good. This is the QSAA headquarters chapter booth. This hardworking guy is Abe. Abe what? Abe Banter. <laughs> and Doug? Dugan. Doug Dugan. You should have seen the piles of uh, shirts and t-shirts and hats at the uh, beginning of the weekend. 
It's like there's a lot of stuff that was sold. Model Magic Products, marketed by Dave Patrick. Cactus Aviation, big kits. And of course, Don Harris Smoke Systems. They sell fuel pumps, smoke oil, and complete smoke systems, including the pumps and the mufflers. Here's a look at the inside of the muffler and the heat exchanger, which actually turns oil into smoke. And here's the pump that pumps the smoke oil. investment and fun you can make. Mm -hmm. Any good words, Bruce? Good words is uh, it was a great weekend, good weather, good people, and a lot of fun. And now for the long drive home. Well, uh, uh, paper wing ugly stick. The front end you can adapt any motor you want to it. You're about to get a treat. Doug Cronkite, iMac president, is going to fly an aerobatic routine with his Cardin aircraft, Cap 232. Walker of Robart fame is flying this 22% Stearman. Built from reduced Sid Morgan plans, this biplane weighs 39 pounds. The power plant? What else? A Robart R780.
Marquette. Unfortunately, we have no information on the pilot. Even more unfortunate, during this flight, the Bearcat was lost. And here's the impact. What a shame. And here's our cover plane. It's a scratch-built Bristol Bullfighter owned by Ken Safer from Fremont, California. Flying weight is 52 pounds and the engines are Sato 300s. Here's a torpedo drop. And there it is in slow motion. Nice job, Ken. Before we leave you, let's watch two Encore flights. The first, Nick Rivaldo C-119 flying boxcar. Our second Encore flight and last flight of the 1997 QSAA Las Vegas fly-in, George Vogelsang's ME328. Remember what we told you earlier about the 328 sagging when it comes off the bungee? Right here it actually touches the dry lake bed but no harm done, and it's got enough power to keep right on climbing. sweaty and today we have to get cleaned up in time for the banquet and Warren it's been a good show absolutely Warner this is one of the best we've ever had and I keep saying that every year but you know it gets bigger and better every year and this year I want to give a very very special thanks to about 15 people uh, the people that don't come here don't realize what goes on behind the lines I have 15 of the most dedicated people that I've ever seen in this hobby and we, we put this thing on and also I'd like to thank our manufacturers for coming they did a great job. They were very generous with their wares. 
and um, I'm really happy with it. There you have it. For 1997 at El Dorado Dry Lake with Warren Cross, I'm Werner Kopp, and we'll see you next year. Thanks a lot.